pretty good as long as you stay there. Yes. All right. Uh, look, uh, Bernard, we welcome you to the multi-party banking inquiry. It'll be the same little spiel we've given to everybody, which is uh, that uh, while your submissions are on the record, uh, they are yours, and we're not covered by parliamentary privilege, so uh, any risk is yours. So uh, we welcome you. Thank you very much for your presentation. All right. I know that uh, Interest Co has a very large membership and that you've been a long time commentator on banking issues mm -hmm. and that you have been challenging on your website the hypothesis that the Reserve Bank Governor and some MPs, including some of ourselves, uh, have pursued, which is that there is an unexplained gap between the OCR and uh, pass-through of short-term interest rates. So we really welcome the argumentation around that and no doubt you may want to cover some of the broader issues uh, that have been raised as well. So thanks very much for coming down here uh, to present to us. Well, thank you very much for the invite. Um, it's great to be here and to uh, have a chance to perhaps put a different case to this committee, that the problem is not the banks are profiteering, but the problem is New Zealand's structural settings which favour housing investment. And I'm going to explain today exactly how the banks are not profiteering, how it's affecting the economy overall, and what I think policymakers like yourselves should do to fix a problem, a problem that could lead to a massive loss of New Zealand's sovereignty, both over our banking system and, frankly, our entire economy. Um, firstly, a bit of introduction about who we are at interest.co.nz. Uh, we, we're a, a, a website available for all borrowers and savers in New Zealand. We're a free website. Some people say that the mainstream media suffer from Attention Deficit Disorder. I would never say that. No. Uh, ADD. Well, on the internet and in blogging, we suffer from Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. <laughs> <laughs> which means all we care about is interest rates. And we're schizophrenic. We get yeah, that's right. <laughs> so all we care about is interest rates. So every seven minutes, one of our analysts checks every bank website to see if there's been a change in their yeah. interest rate. So every, not just the major banks, all the finance companies, all the building societies, all the credit unions, uh, everyone who offers a public interest rate in New Zealand for term deposits and for mortgages, we check every seven minutes. And we've been doing it since 1999. We have the biggest database of retail interest rates in the country, and we offer that up uh, in free form to regular mums and dads. We think that New Zealanders care an awful lot about interest rates. And this is why we think this inquiry is so important and why we've, we've um, decided to make a presentation here today. It's also the basis of our business model. About $170 billion worth of mortgages are in the hands of uh, banks and are owed by New Zealanders to those banks. About $100 billion worth of term deposits. That's about a double on both sides what it was 10 years ago. For New Zealanders, the one economic variable that affects them more than any other is their term deposit and mortgage interest rate. It determines not only their weekly budgets, but also determines indirectly their, um, their net wealth, given that 97% now of people's net wealth is tied up in their homes. I have a little mantra that I talk to um, others here at, at interest.co.nz. I say to them, it's all about interest rates and house prices. And that's exactly how New Zealanders think about the economy and business. We don't care about the stock market. It doesn't exist to us. It doesn't exist to most New Zealanders, about 2 million New Zealanders. That's why we're obsessive compulsive about interest rates. Um, now this chart here, and you can see the red line is the variable mortgage rate, and the blue line is what the 90-day bank bill is. This is essentially the funding costs for the banks for those variable mortgage rates. And that gap, if you like, is their profit margin. So you can see since 2002-03, that profit margin has been pretty steady at around about 3% or so. That's, that's the prima facie profit margin. Uh, then we had the massive fall in the official cash rate in late 2008, and then the banks appeared not to pass on that official cash rate move, and we saw a blowout in that margin between the 90-day bank bill and the variable mortgage rate to about 5%. So we're talking about 100 to 150 to 200 basis points increase in that margin. So surely the banks are profiteering. And this is at the heart of what people are saying 
about the banks. They see the official cash rate at 2.5% and they say, why hasn't the variable mortgage rate fallen that far? It's not just the variable mortgage rate, it's the two-year fixed mortgage rate as well. Again, the red line is the two-year fixed mortgage rate. On average, we monitor the average bank uh, mortgage rate for two years. The red line is what's called the two-year swap rate. This effectively is the wholesale interest rate that the banks have used in the past as their main gauge for what they should be charging for two-year mortgage rates. This is very important because most New Zealanders, at least up until um, six months or so ago, a year ago, focused on the 18-month, two-year, three-year mortgage as the one they would have. About 85% of New Zealanders have fixed rate mortgages. It's the fixed rates that matter most for people. Uh, they haven't come down as much as the official cash rate either. So, they must be creaming it, right? No. And here's, here's why. Um, this chart shows what's happened to what we call the credit default swap spreads for Australasian corporates since October 2007. This essentially is a measure of how risky international financiers think the New Zealand banking system and the Australian banking system is, because they're essentially the same one. You can see here, uh, towards the middle of middle to late 2008, there was a huge spike up. And that margin rose from virtually nothing, about 50 basis points, to about 350 basis points. That's what international investors were putting on top of what they normally charged banks in those international markets. And those international markets are very important because New Zealand banks fund about 30 to 40 per cent of their of the, that $170 billion in mortgages from those international hot money markets. That's important, and as we go forward, it explains part of the reason why um, bank interest rates have risen. Can I just say, uh, is that peculiar to New Zealand, or were those banks uh, or institutions internationally having the same adverse risk effect uh, uh, policy towards other lending? We actually fared much better than the rest yes, of the world because well. the Australian banks are double A plus. So I wasn't or, targeted or at us specifically. Yep, yep. And I'll explain a bit later on why our banks have done better than the rest. Right. And it's partly due to a fantastic Labour politician. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so we've got the wholesale funding costs are up around about 100 basis points. What about the local term deposit funding costs? Because a good chunk, maybe 20-25% of the funding for the New Zealand mortgage book comes from term deposits in New Zealand. So mums and dads putting their money into a six month term deposit or a three month term deposit. The red line shows what the banks are offering on average for a six month term deposit. Now, back till the long distant past, at least 1999 when we started 